Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Sukadin. Last time we head to the headed to the village of the elves, tried to help them out, then they locked us up. Then we escaped and now we're headed to the village of the dwarves to try and figure out a way that we can help them before they kill themselves pretty much. Well, I won't say before they kill themselves. But we need to find a way to stop Quanda Rosman from burning down the forest basically. And the only way to do that is with the help of the dwarves. Because they're the ones that built the burning mirror, so they'll know the way to destroy it. So to get to the dwarves, we have to take the dwarf trail. This should be a fun dungeon. Indeed it shall. Because we get to hear the awesome mountain music. And we're going to get lots of new enemies. I don't particularly want to fight three warthogs. I just don't. First treasure, you got to go behind that bush to get to it, is another feather. Let's see, who should that go to? I guess I could keep it on Funky G. Uh, let's give it to Pawn. Pawn can use all the defense he can get. Pawn is just so weak of a defensive guy. He just, he needs it all. Brand new socks and draws. And he's balling every time I come and talk to y'all. He's puzz he needs it all. And that's some Warren G, baby. Okay, what else we got? We're going to get some good treasures here. Besides the feather that we kicked it off with. It's funny that when you can let go of an en of a group of enemies as big as that last one is, and then you run into a group of two eagle men and you can't let go of it. Anyways, we need to fight more battles anyways because we're I used up a lot of my money on equipment in the last few episodes, or between the last few episodes, I should say. You'll notice that I used Valeria's rune. It's called the Falcon Rune, and it's awesome. Look at that shit. Look at that little combo she does. It's just simply, it's just a cool, basically increased power attack. If you want to do some extra damage to a single enemy, and you you, you like you want to make sure they die, you definitely want to take the time to go through regular attacks and click Falcon Rune, because it doesn't cost you anything to use it. You can use it as much as you want until you just don't want to use it anymore, basically. It's pretty awesome. Probably one of the best runes in the game, and only Valeria possesses it. It's kind of sad she's the only one, but it makes her completely useful tell you that much plus you get to see her little butt flap flapping around and you almost get to see some butt cheek almost it's too bad her her sprite is the same all the time you'll never actually get to see her butt cheek it's just you get teased at it but then again sometimes the teaser is better than the reveal if you know what i'm saying sometimes the trailer is better than the movie if ya did i mean you know what i'm saying mm-hmm so these dwarf bitches got a lot of HP, even though they're weak sauce as hell. And yet I could have let go of them. For some reason I feel like letting go of enemies has something to do with speed as well. Not just the fact that my my level is higher, but if your like, agility... Like if your average agility is a certain percentage higher than the average agility of your enemies, it seems like running away or letting go option appears more. So like the dwarves and the warthogs who are all really slow... You can easily run away, like let go of them. You don't have to be super over leveled. But when when you fight them, they're actually really still hard, even though you can let go of them. And you'll notice that was the sacrificial Buddha, which is an item that will. What does that item do? What is it? Oh, oh, okay. I know what it does. If you have it equipped on a, a party member, if they die in battle, they will auto revive, and that's basically what it is. Which is basically our only form of reviving any er, party members right now. We don't have any other way to revive party members at this current moment in time in bat in battle in battle so if somebody dies in battle you have to wait till after the battle to heal them so you must be careful i know you have six people to work with but you can easily fuck it up and if too if you let too many people die in a battle you can get overwhelmed big time especially if you lose the people in your front row who you should always have the people with the most hp or the best defense in the front row and if, you, if they start dying and the people in the back row have to move to the front, then your back row people are more susceptible to die because they suck in the back row. Like if Kirkus and Luke have to move to the front row, they will die because they are low HP, low defense characters who just get destroyed by just about everything in this game. Kill a crystal. Now that crystal is actually really nice and I will be equipping it on somebody, possibly Victor in the near future. Guard robe. Ooh, that's a nice robe, is it not? Wait, guard robe? Oh, wait. No, it's not. I thought it was something else. For some reason, I thought the guard robe was the magic robe, which is a nice robe. But anyway, the killer crystal, what it does is it raises your critical hit chance. 
So that's really nice to so hit a critical hit more often than not. Who doesn't want to do that? That's just a nice way to deal out nice amounts of damage. And I don't think I fought a warthog yet, so or I guess these I call them the warthogs, but they're death boars. Gotta fight some death boars. Now another thing you should note in this game is you have to get Kirkus up to level 40, not like anytime soon or anything, but to recruit a later character in the game, you will need Kirk Kirkus to reach level 40 for that other character to join. So Kirkus isn't a bad choice to put in your party every once in a while so you can get his ass leveled up. Although a good way to do it in this game obviously is to wait till you get to an, uh, an area where getting to level 40 is easy. And then just put Kirkus in there so he'll get to level 40 in like 2 seconds flat. That is a really good way to level up in this game though. Just kind of wait till later. Just use who you like and then wait till later to level everyone up. It really is the best strategy. There's no lie about that. Awesome mountain music. I love this mountain music. And this is like our first big time mountain dungeon type area with lots of treasure in a while. I mean, we've come across, we went across the that great forest last episode, but that was short, five or six treasures, nothing big time in there. But up here in this in this mountain, lots of good stuff, lots and lots of good stuff. So try not to miss any of the treasures. Try to keep up. Try to keep up. Aw, yeah. Level them bitches up. Level them bitches up. Wow, I can't believe Larry was still alive. 1 HP. How often does somebody actually get exactly 1 HP? That's pretty lucky. Because she didn't actually die in that battle, if I recall. Now, the biggest thing is I'm trying to remember if there's a boss battle here on this mountain. Uh, shows how prepared I am for this, le for this episode. Alright, if there's a boss, I'm prepared. I am. I can let go of all the enemies here now, so that means you're usually prepared for anything that the story can throw at you. What do we got? We got another empty area. Oh, oh, this guy again. The f do you want Kuro Mimi? Yeah, that's his name. Dwarf Stingy keeps sickness cure secret, but Kuro Mimi never give up. What? What does it have to do with anything? What's wrong with your people? What did I do? I, this guy just thinks I did everything. It must have been a human that did something to his people because he just hates me for whatever reason. And I could save it if I wanted, but I'm not worried. Let's hope my worries are not uh, a waste. Yeah, okay, there is no boss battle there. For, I, for some reason, I got worried that there might be one and I was just like, man, I hope there isn't one. So we got to the other side of the Dwarven Trail, which we are now in the area where the Dwarven City lies on the map. Yet another one of these areas on the map which is secluded and the only things on it are this area and one other thing that we're going to go to in a minute. This is the Village of the Dwarves. has its own unique music. I like it. I like it. So let's do a little bit of exploration, shall we? Oh my, it's amazing for humans to get here safely. What? You guys usually attack them along the way? It's not like the monsters on the way here were that hard. And we could stay here, but I didn't really use anything on the way here, or lose anything for that matter. Are you gonna sleep here? Don't break the bed! Well, fuck you! You're gonna try to call me fat? I'm not fat, I'm big bone, bitch. <laughs> Dwarves talking shit on humans just because they're bigger than they are. What's up, dog? This windmill generates the power of thunder and lightning. It's said to be one of the dwarves' secret teachings. Are you not a dwarf? You're not supposed to refer to yourself as a dwarf if you are a dwarf. Then again, if you're talking to a human, I guess, that's fine. What's up, dog? How will you are wonderful look on- Okay, you don't think what? You don't think I can fit in your armor is what you're trying to say? But if I great vault, you can see it just north of here. So they have a great vault. What lies inside the dwarven vault? Lots of dwarven treasure, I assume. I don't have anything to appraise right now. I believe this is also the weapon shop or the armor shop. Yep. Ooh, the half helmet. Buy one of those for Valeria immediately because she doesn't even have a helmet at all. As for armor, nobody I have can wear half armor right now. Fur capes are nice, but I'm not going to buy one of those right now. I think we're good. I just wanted to make sure Valeria had a helmet because for some reason she's limited on what kind of helmet she can wear. She is one of the few characters who can use a shield in the game, so I got her a wooden shield. Actually, she came with a wooden shield. Well, what am I saying? I would have bought her a better shield had I remembered she was coming with me. 
or when she was going to join, or had I remembered to unequip LaPant before I, before she, before he left, damn it. I guess I could have got rid of Luke instead, but I didn't want to have LaPant and Valeria and Pawn in the front row. The main character is too good to not have in the front row. I mean, there will be times when I will have him in the back row, but it's not going to be very often. What else we got around this bitch? Let's see what we got here. We got uh, another house over here. What do we got? Mm -hmm. Little kid dwarves. I'm going to study hard and be smarter than delves, delves or dwarves. Or delves or humans. Be strong enough to beat both of them. Man, they just want to kill all the humans and elves. What a bunch of assholes. We hate the elves. And the elves look down on us. Of course they look down on you. You're short. What do you want them to do? Look up? It's crazy. Dwarves and elves, forever, they hate each other, forever, forever. Hmm, what do we got in here? One one lonely dwarf. There's gonna be one less lonely dwarf. Well, no there's not, I lied. He's gonna be all alone forever. What up, dwarf? Hey there, have you been sharpening your weapons? If you haven't, you'll be sorry. Well, I haven't seen a blacksmith to sharpen my weapons. There should be one here, though. I mean, this is the village of the dwarves. Masters of building things. I'll be a little disappointed if they don't have a fucking blacksmith somewhere. Wait, what did the first thing say? Apparently an imperial general named... Oh. I really couldn't care less. Wow, dwarves are heartless bitches. They don't care if all the elves die. Like, the dwarves won't be next. <laughs> are you one of those so-called humans? No. I'm one of those so-called dwarves that are ten feet tall, bitch. Learn from us like that blacksmith? What, there's a human blacksmith here? Is that what you're trying to say? Turtle crystal? Meh. Not a fan. Mega medicine. I think I will buy one of these. In fact, I think I'll buy two of them. Just to have them. It doesn't hurt to have a few mega medicines for the next dungeon. It is a longer dungeon where we will fighting, be fighting a lot of battles. Here's the blacksmith that they were talking about. And there's a human in here. His name is Mies. Hmm, Moss, eh? Okay, if Moss thinks you guys are okay, then you're okay. I'll help you out. Put me in charge of your weapons. Oh, okay, well. Yep, Mies will be our second blacksmith. Alright, so we got Mies, like I said. He's our second blacksmith. Awesome. Moss and Mies, they must be friends. We'll have to see what they know about each other later. But we can still sharpen our weapons while we're here. And these guys can sharpen the shit out of your weapons, if I recall. I'm going to make the main characters as strong as it can get right here, right now. Anybody who uses their attacks a lot, feel free to max out their shit right now. Now, holy crap. You can go all the way to 9? I didn't think it went that high. Whatever, that's awesome. Definitely going to level up Pawn because Pawn is... Oh shit, I haven't leveled up Pawns at all. That's a my bad, guys. I should have did that before I even went on this adventure. I forgot Pawn is still at level 1. No wonder his attacks were sucking so hard. Alright, well then I'm going to waste all the rest of my money on Pawn. Because Pawn is in the front row and all he does is attack. So, why the hell not? Do I have enough to level up anything else? Ooh, let's go Valeria one more just because I can. And now we're literally out of money. Luckily, I don't need any more money at the moment. And we're going to a dungeon pretty soon with Gremio in our party who will double all of our winnings which will be nice but before we go to that dungeon we gotta go talk to the the village elder and see what's up village elder he looks all fancy schmancy and fancy pantsy what unusual visitors human to delf hand in hand what brings you to the dwarf mines don't look much like mines we've come to ask for a favor a proud elf asking a lowly dwarf for a favor, eh? Have you heard of the Burning Mirror? Of course. I have. It's one of our treasures. Quanta Rosmus has gotten hold of the blueprint and is planning to burn down the forest. Oh ho ho, what a liar. I hope all the elves are- Whoa, what an asshole. Even the elder's an asshole? Wow. Besides, do you expect me to believe one of you sluggish humans really ex succeeded in stealing a blueprint from us? And dwarves are so fast? Come on now. It's true. A fellow called Cage stole the blueprint. Wait, what? I thought Cage was working for Mos, who's part of the Liberation Army. Now we got Cage working for the Imperials too? Whose side is Cage on? You'll have to prove such human competence. You're saying a human can break into our vault? Try it then. 
Oh yeah? You don't think I can break in your vault? Watch me, bitch. What fun. Then try to steal the running water route from our vault. If you can do that, I'll believe your story. Our vault is due north of this village. It was way too big to build here. Ho ho ho. Okay, so Mr. Village Dwarf, Elder, talking shit. Just like the rest of these damn dwarves. Doesn't think I can break in his vault. He thinks humans are incompetent and all that goody non goody choo shoes nonsense. So let's prove him wrong. Aw oh, yeah. So just north of here is actually the vault over here on the mountain. I'm going to let go of that battle. But before I head into the vault, we're going to end the episode. So what lies inside the vault besides this running water route? Are we going to find anything cool inside? Dwarven treasures? Piles of gold? Bags of money? Mountains of dildos? <laughs> uh, find out next time on Let's Play Sukadin. Peace.